Hey friends, welcome to another wonderful episode. I have no idea which camera I'm looking at. <laughs> Stay with this camera. <laughs> that one. <laughs> welcome to another wonderful episode of Coffee with Jeff and Bedros. He's Jeff Sherman, I'm Bedros Koulian, and you're in for a treat because this is the last and final episode of the year 2017, and we've got a lot of fun things planned for you in this episode. So let's get started, Jeff. Awesome. So we're going to start with our week in review. So what is new with you besides the um, burglars from last night? Right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So we had our amazing Christmas party yesterday, <coughs> the HQ Christmas party. And then this morning we woke up to the cops calling us, telling us that the HQ right here we got broken into. Um, what's really cool about it, as Jeff said earlier, we got this place locked down like Fort Knox. And so they were able to break into our learning center, but weren't really able to get into our studio in here. They weren't able to go upstairs where we have a lot of our equipment. And they're actually stuck in our foyer area. They get stuck in there all the time trying to come see you. Right. Well, the idea is for burglars to get stuck, but every now and again, friends get stuck as well. And so, um, but short of that, what did we do? Uh, went to, I went to the uh, LiftFit headquarters. So if anyone knows about the LiftFit brand, that's Randall Pitch right there. He's the founder of LiftFit. So he used to be a client of mine in 2008, 2009, 2010 when he had a personal training gym. And he's, he's an amazing graphic artist. So in 2000. 13, he's like, you know what, I'm going to start drawing these graphics because he skates and surfs and, and lifts. And he goes, um, and I'm going to create a brand called Lift It. And it, it kind of just puttered along for a couple years, but he figured out how to gain traction. And within, I don't know, from 2014 to 2017, he made this thing into an $8 million company. Nice. Yeah. And so he's got Top Thread that he just launched two years ago on top of that. LiftFit is growing faster than ever, so that's a great thing. And uh, Randall's going to be speaking at this business summit in March. And so many people want to start apparel yeah. brands. And so he did it on a shoestring budget. And of course, like I said, we had the Fit Body Bootcamp uh, Christmas party yesterday. That was fun. Went to JJ Virgin's last week again. We went to JJ Virgin's Christmas party at her house in San Diego. Uh, for those of you who don't know JJ Virgin, she wrote a New York Times bestselling book called The Sugar Impact Diet. Um, she's about 14 feet tall, blonde. So if Barbie came to life, that would be JJ Virgin. My toes, I got. What's that? No, no, that, that's still Raymond. Yeah, and that's the party from uh, from yesterday. Where you at, girl? Come on, you gotta keep up. Where's JJ Virgin? I want to see a 12 foot tall blonde. Look at that. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's right, man. There's a scene right to work too. Oh. Look at that. Look at Josh. <laughs> that's Josh's selfie skills. Josh definitely has some selfie skills. <laughs> so anyway, but it was so cool to go go to JJ's house and um, and and meet a lot of the people who are really influencing the health and wellness space at such a level, right? Sorry. So anyway, want to show that twelve more times? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll do a live show later after we, we, we're, we're done with the broadcast here. What about you? What do you got? So we uh, launched the Perfect Life game, which is uh, going really well, getting a lot of great feedback. And then uh, it's either between Jessica or Jackie is in the, in the lead. <clears throat> nice. Uh, neck and neck. Craig's working with the leaderboard. But we haven't seen you on there yet. We need to get started. So yes. Can catch, uh, catch Craig. I do need to get started, and I have gotten started, and <laughs> I will get started. But, uh, but no, it's, it's going great, and uh, we're... Uh, Launched it with our video last week, mailing it out for this week. It's um, just really just a soft launch on our beta, beta testing, and then after the first year, we're going to have our a big launch for the Perfect Life game. But um, so far, the, re, the, the response has been great. Everybody seems to be loving it and getting, wow. a, lot of, getting a lot out of it. Sweet. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of the videos people are putting up, so it's pretty sweet. Awesome. Yeah. And um, so we have our uh, Tech Sweat holiday party, which you're obviously invited to. We haven't let you know yet. But it's uh, Monday. If you can make it down to Laguna for lunch. Yes. Or slash brunch. I will, I will do my best to be there. We are going to... Uh, Wait, because we're not filming one of these, right? Right. So this is the last one. So yeah. I will be there. Awesome. Cool. With a bottle of tequila. <laughs> <laughs> and we're doing a little... Little spin off of the white elephant with that between uh, the six, or actually the three of them. <laughs> it was supposed to be six originally, but we couldn't coordinate with all their significant others and ah. after work, and nobody wants to come back after work, so we're going to do it. So it's a lunchtime. Thing. During work at lunchtime, yeah. Right. So Monday, um, London will send you the details. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're looking forward to that. It's going to be fun. Um, right on the beach in Laguna. Nice. So, so uh, up next, we have a couple. Uh, well, first, we want to talk about. 
you know, this year, want to do since this is the last show of the year, mm -hmm. want to do like a big, you know, end of year roundup. Like, what are some uh, big breakthroughs that our clients have had that uh, changed their business? Uh, for me, one of the things that sticks out is from one of the seven figure masterminds when you brought your uh, your psychiatrist or your therapist, yes, um, to help, and people really had a lot of big breakthroughs and were able to. Uh, Really share their stories and get their stories out there where some people were thinking their stories were, were holding them back so they never told it but then they really got you know got the courage to start telling their story and the business has grown significantly since so just really putting yourself out there so you're more relatable to people and brings you down to earth like down to their level and then um, start building them back up and building your business around that story and that's something that's pretty powerful and it's what makes you different because everybody can offer the same funnels the same kind of workout the same thing but nobody can match especially that kind of story but uh yeah you know well story. you know what you know what's interesting is and i think it's great for everyone who's watching right now is everything that you do in life your relationship with your kids, your relationship with your spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, your relationship with your business, your marketing, how you sell, is all a byproduct of our self-image and self-esteem. Self-esteem is how we feel about ourselves. Self-image is how we think other people see us. Key word there is how we think other people see us. <clears throat> and self-image and self-esteem are really a byproduct of how we were raised. So if you were uh, sexually abused, physically abused, emotionally abused, verbally abused as a kid, and you haven't processed through that, odds are when a funnel fails or someone leaves a bad comment or an angry comment or a nasty comment uh, on one of your marketing ads, you're going to react to it emotionally, whereas someone who's got a strong self-image and someone who's got strong self-esteem self is just going to respond by going, delete, motherfucker, and you're done, right? And they keep marketing. And, and so really... Everyone goes, hey, the problem is my ads, the problem is the competition, the problem is the city I live in is too congested, or people don't value fitness because I'm not on the coast or, or whatever. The reality is most of what you do and the byproduct that you create from it is, a, is the outcome of self-image, self-esteem, and when you start working on your inner game, everything changes. Not just your business and your wealth and the predictability of life, but like everything, your headspace. You're no longer in a funk and depression. Dude, I had clients from that very mastermind when I brought Kevin, my therapist, in. Literally, within 90 days of actually doing the work, right? Because knowing about it is one thing. Doing the work is another. After doing the work, they would do it. I feel like a whole new person. I used to feel like foggy-headed in the mornings. I'd wake up depressed and funky and didn't understand why. And now I'm clear-headed and I don't feel like I'm walking through molasses. So that was a big breakthrough for me as well. Another big breakthrough for me was that more and more of my clients, actually going back to the last mastermind, the seven figure mastermind, more and more of my clients now are using YouTube to drive traffic because the little unknown secret about YouTube is this. And Billy Jean, who I brought in to, to teach us, did an awesome job. When you're about to watch a video, anyone in your community is about to watch a video on YouTube, you can run an ad targeting them. And that video that you're running as an ad if it's not clicked, it's just a branding video. So it's really front of mind awareness, creates branding, doesn't cost you anything. If they click through that video, go to your website for your funnel or your offer, then you're paying for that lead. So YouTube, everyone starts like kind of gathering around Facebook, which is still an amazing place to be, yet YouTube is sending sending trainers leads like for, the, you know, for pennies, and uh, that's been a really big breakthrough for us. Awesome. Yeah, and the other thing is just uh, getting away from like, I remember when we first started. When I first started following you with marketing, it's all it was about SEO and email marketing was like the two main mm -hmm. areas. We went to some right hand ads or something, you know, Facebook a couple years after we got started. But um, now, you know, email we're getting seventeen percent for lucky to open. Yeah. So if you're getting three dollar opt ins for every hundred opt ins you're getting, only seventeen people are seeing it. You're paying a lot to get people to, you know to the site. Where now with the Facebook Lives and creating biz, you know video audiences. And um, now with messenger ads and text message marketing, we're getting ninety, you know, ninety percent and higher, you know, open rates and click through rates. Yep. Um, so just a new, uh, the new platforms, the new channels to be able to reach people and being able to figure out how to do it without, you know, annoying or overstepping any bounds. And uh, that's the key, you know, starting to figure out what people deem as like acceptable when it comes to being marketed to in their messenger or on their, or, you know, on their uh, phone through text messaging. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, it's funny because acceptability changes as new technology comes about. 
Like now, I find myself texting back and forth or DMing back and forth with people on Instagram as though we're texting. I even said it as though I said texting and I had to correct myself, DMing. But that's become an, an acceptable form of communication. Um, but you brought up a good point, email marketing. Can I, can I share a really awesome email hack? Yep. The Joan Marion, by the way, so my, you know Joan Marion. Of course. Yeah. My friend Joan Marion charged $25,000 per person and he got 50 people to Tampa about four weeks ago. Um, and he taught us something that most other people don't know. Now, Joe Marion is the founder of Biotrust. And Biotrust Supplements does over $100 million a year. Joe Marion has 4.3 million people on his email list. You can imagine the kind of split testing and mailing he does to produce that kind of money. And so the new way of emailing, if you, if you really want to take, raise your open rates big time, over the next four weeks, I want you to stop emailing anyone who hasn't opened your emails in the last two weeks. In other words, just email to the people who have most recently opened for the next four weeks. After four weeks, you can email your whole list one time. And when you do, you'll see you'll have a higher open rate. After that one time, anyone who didn't open, you can scrub off your email list. Now, I know it's the scariest thing for people when I say you have a 5,000 person email list or a 10,000 person email list, you know, take the a thousand people off who haven't opened your emails for several weeks or a couple months. But guess what? If they're not opening your emails and you're still sending to them, you're really telling Google, which is Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, and AOL that I'm a spammer. That's, that's the message you're sending to them. And so they're putting you in that other inbox, in the junk inbox, in the spam inbox, instead of in the actual inbox. And so if you can just take the most recent people that have opened, right? And for the next four weeks, just email to the most recent people that have opened and then email to your whole list one time. And then of course, now you've got the hottest list and anyone who didn't open, just scrub off your list. At the end of the day, the size of the list doesn't matter. It's the motion of the ocean. I have to say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but truly, if you take off this, it's called, it's called list hygiene. If you scrub your email list and you take off the people who don't belong in there, they haven't opened for a month or two, immediately you're going to have higher open rates. And the trick is by sending to the people for the next four weeks who have, who have opened, you're telling Hotmail and uh, Yahoo, Gmail and AOL that you practice good list hygiene because each time you mail, it's going to responsive people who open and who read and who might click the link. That sends a message to all the email platforms saying, this marketer is a solid marketer who follows good list hygiene and is actually doing a solid job. Um, and they start letting more of your emails through. That's why that fifth email that you're gonna send out to everyone, they're gonna let most of it through, mm, right? Because it makes it in the inbox. Yes, yeah. and then you scrub the rest who haven't opened and off you go. So there's the hack for the day. Nice. And speaking of Instagram direct, you know, direct messaging, you were saying that one of the articles I thought you were gonna put on here, but I didn't see it. Um, they're actually putting up their own messenger app, so separate from Instagram, nice. like Facebook Messenger. Um, so people are starting to not just you, but everyone else as well. So, yeah. Um, use uh, Instagram direct, you know, direct messages a lot more. It's such a convenient so, way to, uh -huh. to connect with people who are otherwise unreachable, right? Yeah, for sure. I love it. And then the last thing uh, that comes to mind for me is that you know now you know after we've been running funnels for you know just with their agency even for the last two and a half years, um, you know just running cold traffic to a direct offer just hasn't been working as well. That with Facebook charging more. Um, so it's really all about putting the content in front of, you know, uh, your offers and building up that no like trust factor and then retargeting to that same audience through your Facebook Lives and stuff. Yeah. That's been one of the biggest keys, um, especially later this, you know, in the you know, last six months. Um, we've seen a lot of clients getting a lot of great results from, you know, so content has always been the king, but it's usually those blog posts and stuff in the past, and now it's, yeah. you know, every, you know, daily or weekly lives at least. <laughs> you know, that's a really good point, right? Like the model hasn't changed. Content is still king. And if you think about it, before blog posts, before emails, before Facebook and social media, content was still king. Because who did we trust? We trusted TV, right? And you trusted Alex Trebek, and um, you know he entertained. Was it Alex Trebek who did Jeopardy? I think so. Yes. Right. Okay. So you watch Jeopardy. You watch it for free. You don't have to pay because they run ads. But you start trusting Alex Trebek, and all of a sudden he puts his name on a supplement line, or he puts his name on the AARP. And you start buying the product or or chase bank credit cards you start buying the product and so you first have to build trust and authority 
before you can ask for the sale. Everyone wants to go to the bar and meet the wife. Nobody wants to go to the bar, buy the drink, make her laugh, date her for a while, get to know she cray cray, <laughs> and then marry her, right? Just throwing it out there. Right. Cray cray, then marry her? Right, if she's cray cray, then marry her, but then quickly divorce her. Yeah. Awesome. Take half my money. Oh, wait, we're in California. Marry up. <laughs> yeah, marry up. Marry a crazy bride. Marry up. Yeah, because I got crazy eyes. So this next article is, uh, it's amazing. And I've always said like, no matter, like once you learn marketing and you learn you know, the, the principles and you can pretty much go into any industry and make money. And usually the person at the top of every industry is probably a billionaire, like any industry. Yep. So really you can do, you know, especially in this country, you, can, you know, like especially in California, I've been like drowning in opportunities since I moved out here to learn to say no. But um, on YouTube, the number eight, you know, earner on YouTube was a six year old boy. <laughs> Okay, tell us more. Tell us more. <laughs> and uh, so he did eleven million dollars in just ad revenue, no other way of monetizing. In one year. In one year, about a million, almost a million a month in Sorry. reviewing toys. Wow. So for our friends watching, he didn't sell anything. Right. He was reviewing toys, and he did a million dollars in sales from ad revenue. Eleven million. Eleven. Almost million. a million a month. Yeah. Like and nineteen million dollars <coughs> for that. Holy video. smokes! So. It, his parents started uh, videoing when he was like three, opening up toys, and then they would ask him questions about why do you like the toys, stuff like that, and they were videoing it, and it started off really slow, and then he had one video that just went viral, and uh, got 800 million views. Wow. And is that over a million subscribers? Yes. London? Is that what I'm getting? Uh, a million forty. So if you, if you just do this, <laughs> let's see here, if you take, get rid of the two numbers there, what is that, 40,000? Yeah. Okay, that's about where I am. <laughs> and I'm nowhere near as cute as that little fucker. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this shows you that you can do whatever you love and make money, you know, make money out. Right. And um, yeah, I thought that was a really cool, uh, really cool story and a crazy amount of money just from ad revenue alone. Yeah. Now, what about, what about Apple? It looks like Apple's starting to get into the old cryptocurrency world. Well, they're getting into the blockchain world, which mm. is the technology behind cryptocurrency. And uh, they filed for a patent um, some, with uh, blockchain technology behind it. There's more about like uh, timestamps. And the thing with blockchain is that it comes with a third party that verifies that what, what took place actually took place in more than one. It makes it really hard to hack into, almost impossible, nearly impossible. Because like with Bitcoin, there's probably thousands of Bitcoin miners around the world that have a full copy of the ledger from day one until today. Yes. And every single one that's in the network has to match. If yours doesn't match, you on that picture out of the network, so it's impossible to hack into. Um, and then once a block is formed, it can never be changed. Can I tell you something? I was nodding my head for about a whopping 12 seconds there. And you don't know. I have no fucking clue. <laughs> anyway, it's unhackable. Right. It's uh, unhackable. Uh, MasterCard did the same. They, they filed for a patent as well. But MasterCard is actually trying to take the cryptocurrency out of the blockchain. Uh, they want to be able to transfer money internationally using the blockchain. Using blockchain. Blockchain technology. Just more secure. Secure it, yeah. That makes so, sense. See, I understood that part. Whether cryptocurrency you know, becomes mainstream or not, blockchain definitely will. And this is just proving that point where you have two major companies. London, can you figure out how I can do this with Bitcoins? Yeah. Because <laughs> when I tried it with real coins, the strippers were like, oh, my eye. But, and then with dollar bills, it, sometimes you get a paper cut. Mm. So you could probably, if you did that in a video, Drew could probably like digitize pixels. Like yes. <laughs> Yeah, like digital. Uh, yes. Yeah, yes. I say torque, and I'll throw you a Bitcoin. No, I don't. I don't go to those places. <laughs> Actually, I meant to. Explain. True story. Can I tell you guys a quick story? Um, and you can log off if you want. <laughs> don't. I've only been to a strip club once. This was about eighteen years ago. I knew I wasn't going to like it because I'm one of those guys that I need to be like. I need to know that she's into me. Mm -hmm. I can't just pay for a dance. And I don't judge any one of my friends, Chanta, <coughs> who, <laughs> who, uh, who might be cool with going to a strip club. But I just wasn't into it because, well, if I had to pay, that means you're faking the interest. Mm -hmm. And that kind of hurts my feelings. And so I can't get into it. And so I offended the, the young lady who I'm sure was working her way through law school. Uh, and then I, she asked me to leave, and, and then the big giant guy asked me to leave, and then I left. Because you didn't want to give her that. money. Right. I was like, can we just talk? Like, I think you're interesting. You smell like coconuts. <laughs> and um, 
<laughs> yeah, if you, know, you want to. And then I said, but if I give, give you the money, that means you're faking it. Mm-hmm. I don't like that. It hurts my emotions and I can't get into it. She's like, you got to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and then he confirmed that I got the fuck out of there. That's how that worked. Nice. Right. Yeah, I know that wasn't part of the outline that you wrote here, Linda. I'll, I'll find her down. I'll track her down and you can give her bitcoins. Right, right. I can bitcoin her. Yeah. 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 Awesome. And moving on to what's trending on social. So uh, one problem that a lot of people have that put videos, I know you like to do ones in your car and you start off with some music on. And you're yes. Out to certain, uh, you know, c- certain types of music. Mm-hmm. Have you ever gotten any of your music, any of your videos banned because of the song? I have. I have actually. Get a little hack around <coughs> I do. <laughs> I'm going to share my hack right here. Mark Zuckerberg, I hope you're not watching this live that we're doing. Well, they record all our voice and then. Oh, that's true. Okay, great. So, what I do <laughs> is, you know, have they send you an email saying, hey, you're using copyrighted music. How dare you? Yeah. But if you have the permission from the artist, just click here and we'll upload that video right up. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure Eminem would approve this. Can I just hit the little thing? And then it gets free PR. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm good. So if you don't want to use that hack, Facebook is trying to come up with a solution. I don't necessarily know if it's a good one or not, but they have a new thing coming out, or might already be out for some users, called Sound Collection, where you can actually add royalty-free sounds <coughs> and some music of people that you've probably never heard of before, but you can at least add some music to your videos. Gotcha. Or you could do Eminem, Jimi Hendrix, Jay-Z, and just click that little button on the email like I do. And you think that you know Facebook, they, an article was saying that they've been trying to work out deals in 2015 with... You know, the, the big industry. Uh, the music industry is so protective. <laughs> they just, mm-hmm. they're, they're never going to let it happen. But, um, you know, I don't know if you can talk about it or not, but you know some people that are working out some solutions that would be much better than the same Yes, yeah, I can talk about it because Matt Smith was officially on Fox News Network a couple weeks ago and he announced it. But uh, my good friend Matt Smith, who owns a company called uh, Royalty Exchange, you can actually, and, and the first deal they signed, well, the first big deal, they've got a lot of kind of mid-level artists like you were just telling us about, but the first big deal they signed with was Eminem. And so now you can actually, for royal, uh, it's not royalty free, but effectively, you're almost buying stock in Eminem music, you get to use it, and then when others use it, you get a little exchange back. So you're making money off people using, uh-huh. yeah, these artists, <coughs> and the artist says, yeah, go ahead. Well, because they know people like me are gonna do it anyway for free, yeah. they might as well start making money off of it. That's smart. Yeah. Awesome. So you know how Google's trying to get into social and it's failed miserably. Mm-hmm. You know the one was it called? Google Plus. Google Plus. Plus. Yeah. My picture is still the same from 2014. Mm-hmm. So now they're trying to make search social. Huh. So they know like all the major keywords that people like search all the time. So even when I use the private browser. <laughs> even in the private browser, Google still gets it. They just don't share that with your friends. Oh. Google, Google still gets it though. Right. Because you would not want to hang out with me, bro. Right? <laughs> so what they're doing, what they've already done, um, is. You know, if you Google like, does can Major Cullian still play the? You know, can he really play the guitar? And if you were a celebrity, like a not, you know, like an A-list celebrity, I'm I know, not a I know celebrity. you're a celebrity, <laughs> but like an A-list celebrity. Me and my mom think I'm a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, and they re- they would reach out to you and you would you would create a video answering that search, saying yes, I really do play the guitar. Here you go, and then you play like in a video. And then they would file that. Yeah, so that comes up. That would come up in the search. That in the answer. future, that would come up. Well, right now. Um, well, or really just for that one. Uh, well, they have it for different of the, all the major searches. Like, yeah, Ken Will Ferrell really plays the drums, and then he he'll answer, "Yes, I can really play the drums," and you know whatever. But then, so if he does it, does that get filed away so that the next time, like a year from now, someone types that question in, does that video come up? I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm gonna fuck yeah. <laughs> How cool would that be? That's yeah. cool. Still doing that, so you can see some other ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That is awesome, man. So it's gonna be. He so really. Good. Every time I see him, I still see George Bush. Like when he would do the George Bush impersonations. It's great. Yeah. Holy smokes. Awesome. Then last but not least is that Facebook is creating a Messenger Kids app for kids that are under thirteen, and I'm still undecided whether I like this or not. But you know, Emily's already using FaceTime, and she already uses you know tablet or phone. Um, they don't need like a phone number or an email address. You actually create the kids message. You download Messenger Kids to their to their uh, device under your account, um, and then you can approve who they can message with. So that way they can be in, in the loop on family messages. If it's like a vacation coming up, and the family's like messaging back and forth about the trip. They can be included, um, but they have no other control whatsoever. So they can't find friends. They can't accept messages. So they're trying because they're saying that kids will go into Facebook and create an account illegally anyway. But if you do this, this will keep them from creating that account. But I also think 
Facebook's losing a lot of young kids to Snapchat and WhatsApp and everything else. Yeah. But they're trying to get younger kids already hooked because once they turn 13, then it can convert into a regular Facebook account. But, yeah, that makes sense. Um, but it makes sense. It, you know, they're already intrigued about like Facebook and whatnot because like we actually have Emily playing Perfect Life game. She wanted to play because she sees me and Jessica playing yeah. it and she wanted to be involved. So we created her like a little an account. She can see the membership site, but she can't see what's going on on Facebook. So she's like grabbing Jessica's phone and, and going into the group. So I'm ready. So I'm like, maybe this is a, maybe this is a good idea. It might be a good fix, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what's, what's your opinion on, on that? Well, here, here's... Because they're right around that, you know, cusp of transfer yeah. to a real account. My son's 12. My daughter's 10. They I know on their iPads, they play games where they can talk to their friends from school. And my <coughs> and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that I'm okay with, but to go on the social media world, I'm not okay with. Like, already there's, they're going to have plenty of time in life to do that. Now it's not the time, as far as I'm concerned, but I'm, yeah. uh, uh, maybe. Are they already, like, FaceTiming, like, your parents? <coughs> your parents probably aren't on Facebook. No, no. But other people's parents. <laughs> you know how we FaceTime? I say, get the fuck in the car, we're driving to Anaheim <laughs> to see your Bobby and Dottie. Like, that's what we do. I'm a little old school. And, like, if there was, like, a whole group text going on between, between everybody, my kids shouldn't have to feel the anxiety of, oh, shit. You know, are we going to go on this trip? Are they not? I'm just going to tell you, get your fucking shit together and pack it up for four days because we're going on a trip. And then they do because you're the kid. I'm the adult. When I was a kid, I was told what to do. Uh, so I want to just keep that abuse going. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. That's great advice. And then I'll pay for the therapy in the future. Yeah. Everybody awesome. in Facebook world thinks I'm an asshole right now. Eh, I can be. I can be. But I know you also agree with me. At least half of them. Right. Right. So do we have a unicorn sighting today? We do, and this week's unicorn is <laughs> Mr. Matt Wilbur. Yeah, so there's Matt Wilbur there. He owns, uh, dang it, I should know this, either four or five Fit Body Boot Camps with another seven so to open. That's that. Like, wow. <coughs> yeah, yeah, five open and another seven more to open. Yeah. This guy's in Michigan, and he's just crushing it. But more than that, more than just the impact and the income he's making, I think he's just, I think he's going to hit. I don't know if he wants me to share these numbers. Let's just say he's going to have multiple seven figures in this year with his Fit Body Bootcamp locations. And this is not an ad for Fit Body Bootcamp. This is all about Matt Wilbur and what he's doing. Um, he has gone into communities that don't have a, <clears throat> not that they don't have fitness programs. They don't have good fitness programs where the coaches actually train for the outcome instead of just putting people through a workout. Like he makes his clients get 40, 50, 100 pound, 150 pound losses off the bat, his trainers are, they don't even call them trainers, they're coaches because they literally bleed for those clients. But even more so, Matt is now literally paying it forward to our younger, newer Fit Body Bootcamp owners and helping them speed up to his level of growth. So where like a new Fit Body Bootcamp owner took, let's say, a year and a half, two years to get to 25, 35, $40,000 a year, now this is happening in a 12 month period because he's paying it forward. So not only is he helping his community, growing his team, uh, both personally and professionally, but he's done such an amazing job with paying it back to the Fit Body Bootcamp community. And he also has been giving back as well. With uh, he just really jumped on board with your Toys for Tots. Yes, he the number one. Yeah, he was, he was the biggest donor. We donated uh, 250 thousand dollars in toys from Target. And he donated either twenty five or thirty five thousand dollars of that. So that was. And then he also did his own locally. Mm -hmm. On top of that, I saw a big picture of Toys R Us. Yeah. And, uh, pretty amazing. Good yeah. Stuff, uh, what most people don't know is it was in front of it, just stuffed with newspaper. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. They're all they're all legit. You know, Lots how of to read, kids. Right, right. Yeah, those kids they were just like people's kids. They weren't even like homeless kids. Yeah. So congratulations, Matt. And uh, London will be reaching out to you to get your t-shirt size. And, yes. You know, and getting a great. Picture now, it. now, London, he will, he will be here uh, January 8th and 9th. Oh, cool. Yeah, he's in the he's Empire in Mastermind. And I would love for his shirt to just, just <laughs> stop right above the belly button, if you don't mind. Crop top. Yeah, crop top yeah. with a little knot. If Got you can just it. personalize that, I would love that. For the, those two days, I'd like to see him wear that. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> oh, yes. We've got a webinar coming up. You have a webinar coming up. I've got a webinar coming up this Thursday. And we have a webinar, but you're going to be teaching. Yes. Webinar. Yes, I'm going to be teaching it, and the webinar is called Clients on Demand. And uh, for, the, for one client on demand? Mm, nobody, <laughs> right? And for the first time ever, we're going to actually reveal what many of our clients from Fitness Marketer are using and doing what we're doing for them and what we're having them do to get an average of 40 new clients, like paying clients every single month, 
into their boot camps and personal training gyms. And this is not just running ads and funnels. This is way more advanced stuff than that. And it's using the newest stuff that Facebook has to offer to get new clients on demand. And so I'm going to reveal it all. There's nothing we're going to hold back. Um, we touched on a little bit of it during our year in review stuff. Yes. You're going to go yeah. in great detail. On those strategies. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm gonna literally show you the exact ads, the exact demographics, the pages that we send them to, and sometimes here's a hint: we don't send them to a page. Remember, Facebook wants people to stay on Facebook, and we figured out a really clever way to keep the cost of the ads low by keeping them on Facebook and still get the most qualified clients in to your business. So I'll be sharing that, giving you actual examples, um, not just kind of giving you a theory, but actual examples that you can use so that you can make 2018 your most uh, successful year yet. That's this Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Yes, awesome. yes, 3 p.m. Pacific, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern. London, how can we get them on the notification list for that? Um, I'll put in a keyword in the description, and once they type in that keyword to message you or in the comments, they'll get a link to the Perfect. description. Let's do COD for clients on demand. COD. Put COD. Put COD in the comment section if you want to be notified, about the, if you want a reminder about the webinar, which everybody that's watching should. Cash um, on delivery. Who doesn't want <laughs> cash on delivery? And clients and on demand. Client, clients on demand is cash on delivery. It is cash on delivery, let me tell you. <laughs> awesome. Well, that is it for this year. I mean, I think we did a great job. Yes. Hey, and thank you all for joining us, and uh, we will see you on the first episode in January. Bye.